In this video, we're going to open up the abdominal cavity and pelvic cavity of the fetal pig. Now I'm going to start my incision at the chin and I'm going to cut all the way down through the chest and I'm going to cut through some of the, the bones which are still cartilage here and I'm going to cut down towards the umbilicus. I'm going to go around the umbilicus not all the way around but around the umbilicus and then towards the extremities. Now before I do that let's go ahead and orient ourselves. The headward aspect of the pig is going to be anterior. The tail aspect is going to be posterior. The belly side is going to be ventral and the back side is going to be dorsal. So keep that in mind because I will be using terms uh, that relate to those particular uh, sides or aspects of the pig. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I'm going to make a cut here, hold the, hold the scalpel like a pencil. And what's important here is not to go too deep. If you go too shallow that's okay because you can always cut a little bit deeper. But if you go too deep you will cut through some of the vital organs that we want to take a look at and some of these organs are going to leak some fluids that uh, will get in our way. So we want to be careful not to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start right here. Remember to keep your fingers out of the way. And I'm going to start right here and I'm going to put the scalpel in and begin making a cut. So we're going to cut up here. I'm going to apply some pressure. You can see that I cut a little shallow there. That's okay. I'm into the muscle a little bit. I'm going to cut through that and I'm going to cut up right up into the chin of the pig, right into the chin here. Now, I'm going to move, and you would want to turn your tray to make this a little bit easier for yourself, but I'm going to cut down through here. I'm actually going to start here, I think, and I will cut around the umbilicus and up. Same thing here. I'm going to come down here near the lower extremity. I'm going to cut around the umbilical cord and then up. Now, I'm going to move this away just a little bit. You can see the muscle there. I'm going to cut a little bit deeper here. Gently, gently. I don't want to cut too deep you can see that some of the preservative and fluids are starting to come out so I know I'm into the abdominal and pelvic cavities and I'm going to cut just a little bit deeper here and I'm going to do the same thing on this side cut just a little bit deeper See, I'm through just a little bit. What you might want to do here is get your forceps and kind of lift up the tissue just a little bit. Tent that up and then make some cuts. And again, take your time here. Good work here will pay off. deeper there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take a paper towel and I'm just going to clean up some of this liquid around here and we can see what we're working with here. Now I'm going to reflect the skin here and you can see here's the umbilicus and when I reflect the skin you can see this vessel right here, this blood vessel. Now that blood vessel that runs from the umbilical cord to the liver is going to be the umbilical vein. That's going to be the umbilical vein. We're going to go ahead and cut that so we can reflect this all the way. 
So I'm just gonna I'm gonna cut it in the middle. That way I can see where the umbilical vein comes off the umbilical cord, and I can see where it comes off the liver. So I'm gonna cut it right in the middle there, just like that. And then I'm gonna reflect this back, and I can go ahead and cut just a little bit deeper here, and a little bit deeper there. Now again, I want to go in here, I want to soak up some of this liquid here so that I can see what I'm working with. And the reason why I cut around the umbilical cord is because of this structure right here. You can see three structures, one, two, and the third structure right there. The structure that I've got the probe underneath is an umbilical artery. You've got two umbilical arteries, one, two, and they are diving deep towards the aorta. And this structure right here in the middle is going to be the urinary bladder. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut that urinary bladder very gently. I'm going to cut it right here. I'm not going to cut the arteries at all, but I'm going to cut that urinary bladder. Just give it a little cut. Sometimes it's muscle. Urinary bladder is muscle. So it's going to require a little uh, effort. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and open that up and stretch it out a little bit. And you can see that it is, it is a container. It is a muscular container. That is the urinary bladder that I've got my probe inside. That's the urinary bladder. Now, let's go ahead and you can see, I'm going to reflect the skin a little bit here and you can see some tissue. I'm going to cut through that tissue a little bit right here. And I'm going to again wick up some of the liquid so that we can visualize this a little bit better. And you can see some of this saran wrap like tissue here. I'm going to put the probe right through it. I'm moving some of it out of the way. This tissue, you can see it right there. I'm tearing through it a little bit. You can see the fibers right here that I've got the probe underneath. Those are fibrous connective tissue and it's going to hold the skin firmly to the muscles, the abdominal muscles. That is fibrous connective tissue. I'm going to cut some of the skin out of the way so we can see a little bit better here. Again, be very careful with the fingers. I'm going to cut some of this skin out of the way. And this is also going to allow some of that preservative and fluid to drain a little bit more easily. You can see this very shiny layer right here. And this is the peritoneum. The peritoneum is going to do a couple jobs for us. One, it's going to provide some protection against germs. And number two, it's very slippery. Run your finger across there, you'll see it's very smooth, very slippery. And that allows organs to move relative to each other in the abdominal and pelvic cavity very easily. Because our organs do move around a little bit. We're not always aware of that, but they do move around. So I'm going to take the scissors and I'm going to snip some of this skin off. If the scalpel works better, you're free to use the scalpel. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the other side. I'm going to cut a little slot there so I can get rid of excess liquid. squeeze a little bit, get rid of some of that excess liquid. And now I can visualize the structures of the abdominal cavity and the pelvic cavity. Here we see this large brown structure right here. This is going to be the liver. This is going to be the liver. And just above the liver I want you to be able to visualize the diaphragm because this is a mammal and I want you to be able to visualize the diaphragm of a mammal. 
So I'll cut some of this tissue out of the way. And you can see here above the liver there is this layer of tissue separating and it's also lined by peritoneum. This layer of tissue and it's separating the chest cavity from the abdominal cavity. That's going to be that's going to be our diaphragm. We'll see it a little bit better when I open up this chest cavity. This is all liver. Liver's a large organ. And if we look at the underside of the liver, right where this umbilical vein is entering, you see a pouch-like structure. And this pouch-like structure is going to be the gallbladder, which stores bile for digestion. Now if we look down here a little bit further, you can see a small tube right here leading away from the gallbladder. Be very careful, it's a very delicate tube. You can see that I've got the probe underneath a little tube-like structure. And that tube-like structure is the cystic duct. And that is going to move bile away from the gallbladder. A little bit further here, which is difficult to see, the liver is going to have its own tube called the hepatic duct. And the bile, the cystic duct and the hepatic duct are going to come together and somewhere right next to the small intestine they will form a common bile duct. And the bile will get put into the small intestine, the first part of the small intestine where it will do its work. Now, let's go ahead and visualize some of the other structures here. We can see all these coiled, small diameter tubes. This is all small intestine, all small intestine. Now, over here we see this larger, and if you move your fingers around, you can see that it's, it's, very, it's separate and distinct. And this separate and distinct coil of intestines is going to be the large intestine. Now, at the junction of the large intestine and small intestine, we're going to have a blind pouch-like structure. And I'm going to look for that right now. This blind pouch-like structure I'm looking for is the cecum. And I'm going to move the intestines out of the way a little bit. And I've got it right here. This is going to be the cecum. And I know it's the cecum because it's, it's a dead end. It doesn't go any further. So that's going to be the cecum. And the cecum is an extension of the large intestine. Especially in herbivores, the cecum is very large. In omnivores, like the pig and us, the cecum is very small, and it's basically a fermentation chamber. It's where plant material is going to get further broken down. You can see some material holding the cecum to the small intestine there. And you can also see that the small intestine is held by some tissue there. You can see that shiny tissue. I can lift it up. You can see that there's some shiny tissue enclosing the small intestine. All that shiny tissue, and you can see blood vessels in there too, all that shiny tissue is going to be referred to as mesentery. Mesentery is just a fold of peritoneum that surrounds some of the small intestines. And it's going to anchor the small intestines into place. So I can't pull these small intestines out. And the reason is there is a fold of peritoneum coming from the body cavity surrounding the small intestines and going back to the body cavity again. And that fold of peritoneum has a special name called mesentery. Now let's take a look at some of the other structures that we have here. I'm going to give this a little bit of a squeeze again and get rid of some of that liquid. But Here's some additional structures that we want to be familiar with. So again, this is the liver. On the underside of the liver, we have this big pouchy structure here. This large pouchy structure, you can feel that it's full of liquid. 
There's actually amniotic fluid in there. There's some uh, sloughed off cells. There's also probably some bile in there that the pig has swallowed. And this is going to be the stomach, the stomach. Underneath the stomach, we're going to see this long structure. I've got the probe underneath it right now. This structure is the spleen. The spleen has a couple roles. It's going to play a role in the immune system. It's going to help fight germs. And the spleen also gets rid of old, worn out red blood cells. So those are two jobs of the spleen. You can see some additional uh, tissue here holding the spleen in place. Now, as we go to the underside of the stomach, I'm going to lift the stomach up. Again, we can see some more tissue there. I'm going to cut through that a little bit. And we see this very grainy structure come into view right here. You can see it looks like grains of sand, almost like little bits of gravel. And whenever we see grainy looking structures, we should be thinking endocrine gland. And that's exactly what this is. I'm going to open this up just a little bit more here, clean this up, and get some of this tissue out of the way. And I want to be careful here because endocrine gland tears rather easily. So we can see this endocrine gland right on through here. And that endocrine gland is going to be the pancreas. That's the pancreas right here. Now, we can see two more structures come into view. Again, I'm going to get some of this liquid out of the way here. And here is one of those structures. This is the kidney. This is one of the kidneys. Now, the kidney, you can see that it's actually, I'm going to poke a hole here, it's behind this saran wrap-like material. This saran wrap-like material is peritoneum. And this kidney is literally behind the peritoneum. So when something is behind the peritoneum, we're going to call it retroperitoneal. It's behind that peritoneum. And I am going to make a small cut through that peritoneum, just like that, being careful not to cut the kidney. I'm going to clean some of that up a little bit. And I'm going to pull off some of that peritoneum. I'm going to get it out of the way and I'm going to free up the kidney. And I'm going to do this with the probe. Just gently free it up a little bit. Free it up. Now I want to be careful here because I'm looking for another structure. It's going to be underneath this, this peritoneum also. And it's going to be around the superior medial aspect of the kidney, right where my probe is. And I'm looking for the adrenal gland. This might be a little tougher over here because I've got the pancreas. Let's go ahead and look on the other side and see if we can visualize it better there. So I'm going to move these intestines out of the way again. And you can see the other kidney. Now again, I'm going to move the peritoneum out of the way. So I'm doing that with the probe. And as I do that, I can see a small tube come into view. You can see that tube right there. That is a ureter. And the ureter is going to drain the kidney. It's going to come out of this little opening here. It's going to drain the kidney. And you can see it going towards the urinary bladder. That's going to be the ureter. You can also see some blood vessels here. One of these is going to be the renal artery. The other one's going to be the renal vein. The lighter one's going to be the renal artery. The darker one here is going to be the renal vein. And those bring blood to and away from the kidney. And I'm going to free up this kidney. Here it comes. I'm going to free that up, and I'm looking for that adrenal gland. It's right around here, so I want to be very careful not to damage it. I'm going to try to get in there and take a look at it. And this is actually going to be it right there. It's very small in the fetal pig, obviously. It's going to be larger in you. But again, if I take a close look, and I'm being very careful, it's right there. I'm going to go ahead and wick up some of that preservative. And you can see that adrenal gland come into view right there. That's going to be the adrenal gland. Just a small sliver of material. 
It's going to sit on the superior medial aspect. Now, in a human, it would sit right on top like a, like a, a scoop of ice cream. But in the fetal pig, it's going to be off to the, the medial side just a little bit. So there it is right there. Maybe we can see it a little bit better on the other side when we, we get over to that area. Now, some additional structures I want you to be familiar with, and we're kind of looking around here a little bit, is we're going to go back to the stomach again. This is the stomach here. You can see it's that large organ. And I'm going to cut that stomach open. I'm going to cut it open along its greater curvature, that large curve. Not the smaller curve, but the greater curvature. And I'm going to eventually cut right into the small intestine a little bit. If I feel right now, and I put my fingers right on the intersection of the stomach and small intestine right there. I can feel this gumball, this very thick structure, like a gumball almost. It's very muscular. That's going to be the pyloric sphincter. The sphincter is simply a round muscle that's going to uh, contract and relax. This sphincter is going to control the emptying of the contents from the stomach into the first part of the small intestine. And we want to take a look at that sphincter. It's very large and very obvious. You want to feel it with your fingers first and then see it with your eyes second. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make an incision into the stomach. And again, there might be some liquid come out of here. That's okay. I'm going to try to do this without moving it too much. So I cut that open and again, you see some mucus. You can see some uh, amniotic fluid some uh, green liquid, which is uh, bile that has entered the stomach. And I'm going to take a look at the inside of that stomach, very smooth. And I'm going to continue to cut, and I'm going to cut right through that pyloric sphincter. And I want you to take a look at how thick that muscle is. So I've begun to cut through there, and I'm going to open this up a little bit. And you can see right there the pyloric sphincter. You can see that thick muscle that I cut through right there. You can see how the, the tissue changes as I start to go into the small intestine. And this is the pyloric sphincter, that thickening right here. That is the pyloric sphincter all through here. Take a look at that. And then later on I want you to cut a little loop of the small intestine. Because the small intestine is where a large amount of digestion is going to occur, but it's also an area where a lot of absorption is going to occur. And I want you to feel the inside of that small intestine. So I'm going to take a, a little loop of that small intestine. I'm just going to go ahead and cut it. And then I'm going to cut it open. And I'm trying to do this a little slippery, but I'm going to cut a loop. I'm going to go ahead and use the forceps here, see if they can help me out just a little bit. And I think they will. And I'm going to open that up and cut and cut a little bit more. And you can see right there, you can see that it looks very like velvet almost almost fuzzy, like velvet, all through here. And that is because there are little microscopic projections, little finger-like projections, all through the small intestine. And the job of those little finger-like projections is simply to increase surface area so we can secrete more enzymes and absorb more nutrients. So that's an important uh, point to consider here. Now, a couple more things that I want to do. We're going to go look around here just a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and take a look on the other side and see if we can see a little bit better view of the kidney and adrenal gland over here. I'm going to soak up some of that liquid. And I'm going to remove this kidney. I'm going to slowly kind of tease this kidney away 
being careful because I do want to see that adrenal gland if it's over here. So I'm going to move that pancreas out of the way and just kind of work your way in here. So I'm kind of working my way in there with the kidney, moving some of this peritoneum out of the way. And I'm looking for that adrenal gland. And remember, it's very small, so it's not going to be that easy to see. And I don't really, I can see it up through here just a little bit. And up, oh, I just opened it up. If you can see that in here, right here, I actually pulled that adrenal gland and slid it right open with the, with the probe. You can see it's sort of grainy. Again, it's an endocrine gland, so it's going to be grainy. And there it was right there, just a little sliver of material right there. You can see that it's opened up and how it looks a little bit grainy, like small pieces of gravel. Now I'm going to cut this kidney right out. So I'm just going to cut that renal artery. And it's a little slippery. Cut it right out. There we go. There's the ureter. I'm going to have to go ahead and cut that ureter also. And there is my kidney. I'm going to put the kidney up here. And I want to section it, or cut it, lengthwise from top to bottom. And what I'm going to be looking for is I want to see the outer part of the kidney, called the renal cortex, and the inner part of the kidney, called the renal medulla. So I'm going to be very careful with my fingers here, very careful. And I'm going to try to cut this right in half. Cut through there. I'm going to turn it and continue to cut again. Again, be very careful. Your fingers are more important than this kidney. So it is very slippery. Getting to open it up just a little bit here. I'm going to cut, cut again. So you can see an outer portion right here. That's the renal cortex. And an inner portion here. This is all the renal medulla. And that's going to be it for part two.